So you know my dad's uh, my dad's in the hospital, right? And he's but he's 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 concerned because he they've mixed uh, holy water with his laxative. Okay. And he's really concerned that he's going to start a religious movement. <laughs> Josh. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex. It's a poor I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to Patreon for following us again. Subscribe to the hit the like button. Hey, Patreon! Yoo-hoo! I don't know what that means, but you do. Today we got a Shabu Khan interview with... What? Who's he interviewing? Um, Panma Cho... How do you say her name? Anupa... Oh, Anuparma Chopra. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I can't pronounce her name. So is he really? I was joking. He's doing the interviewing? No, no, no. Okay. No. He's getting interviewed. Got it. Uh, this is a 2017 film, so probably the last time his film came out, right? Yep. Um, so it might have been for Rays or something like that. Um, but uh, it's like she goes over his career and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. She's really good at interviewing. Sure. Obviously, we just saw her one with uh, Kieran Johar. Uh, I think she, that's one of her strongest. Seasons. Yeah, how many have we seen her do now? Quite a few. She's she's one of the better interviewers I feel like in India. I she's one of the better interviewers I've seen. Yeah. Period. Especially when talking to to actors. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Film companion, your butt. Hot damn. I feel like I've hit the film journalist jackpot. Cheers. Three interviews in four months. You have a variety. You're a star now. You're a full-fetched star. You're a Shah now. And you can retire after this. Absolutely. Are you tired of talking about yourself? About uh, myself? I, it, normally people don't ask me too much about myself. But about the film, but they ask similar questions. You know, that um, is there a... Maybe, so I'll, 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 let me ask the questions that you may ask so I don't have to answer them. Okay? <laughs> so if you're going to ask me... Is there a concerted effort that you're moving towards a different kind of cinema, seeing the choices of your last three films, Dear Zindagi, Rais, and Fan? No. It's coincidental. <laughs> so, uh, as you're maturing, are you planning to do other roles, different kinds so of roles? So he is asking the questions. And, and stuff like that. No. <laughs> uh, I think the younger girls are still finding me nice, so I'll be <laughs> doing roles with the younger girls. How do you see, uh, with the advent of uh, uh, these actors uh, shifting over to Hollywood. Do you have any plans to do the same? And do you think Indian cinema can go uh, across and make it smart like uh, because of these two young ladies who've done it? And the fourth one is, in Rays, you're back to a dark character. It's a space that you have done with Dar and Bazi uh, How different is it <laughs> from those two roles? And do you really enjoy being the bad guy? Okay, and if I promise not to ask you any of these, then you are a superstar. Right? <laughs> then I'm truly a superstar. Then you're truly alive. You are, you are it. This is it. Listen, let's okay. Let's start with Ray. So, okay. so the the gangster film is by design sort of morally tricky hmm. because there's a bad guy doing bad things, but he's making it so sexy that we're all rooting for him. Oh, uh, and of course you have done the bad guy before, but that was at the beginning of your career, and now you're this global icon. And yet you're making a bootlegger so sexy that we all want to be a bootlegger. <laughs> to be, you know, the Mia Waiki bearing and the Pani Ekatima, we all want it. So so does does that concern you at all because of where you are at now? It does, most certainly. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean this may be the first time first time I'm saying it. Okay, I won't name the films, but there were a couple of films which did very well at the box office. People really appreciated them. Uh, and I was in them. I had said yes to them. And then I realized that I am playing uh, a real life based character uh, who may not be the person. And I told this uh, uh, to the director that there is no way I will not make him like him. And I just feel that person should not be liked. I think, uh, you know, it's not something that I should sell to the people. But it's okay being him or a film is being made about him or a couple of other people and I should glorify it. So I left the film last minute. And uh, it was a very clear-cut decision in my head. And I know I will make it attractive. I'm, I'm not showing off. But the way it was written, bad guys can be very attractive. And uh, I'm honestly saying this, I'm not showing off, but I, I have a penchant for bad guys. I can make them very attractive, uh, somehow. Because I think they both... Uh, the extreme he has that integering quality about guy. him that makes both have something kind in common, of... that is obsessiveness. You have to be uh, possessed and obsessive to be really a devta. And you have to be possessed and obsessive to be really a dhirinda. 
and I think I understand that space as an actor by my upbringing, whatever. So I have let go of that. Uh, when Grace came along, when we became very clear that this is now uh, a study of bootlegging in a period from 85 to 95, uh, it is kind of study of different different zones, people doing it. Um, it's not real. It's not real. Having said that, uh, because it's not real, I'm okay doing it. He's now fictional completely. Um, when you say fictional, meaning over the top, stylized. Uh, no, it's not as stylized as Don. Untrue. Don is really, you know, James he just Bond means it's Lopes. untrue. Sure. You know, so, yeah. I mean, that's. It's, it's, it's he's, cartoonish, yeah, almost. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's really sweet. Yeah. Uh, I think. I should not say this, maybe. <laughs> he's really mean. He kills people also. But, uh, <laughs> this guy is strangely in a realistic world. I think uh, some of the pieces that have been, uh, uh, you know, when they've done research, uh, the method of bypassing law and his competitors are very interesting and real. Intriguing, at least to me, because maybe I'm too urban a person. I don't know this is how it happens, so it's very intriguing to me. Uh, that being real, so it's not over the top that he jumped from a flying plane and you know, tang, 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 that you'll be cool. Uh, he gets hurt, he is disturbed, and his problems are quite real. But he's fictional. I mean, there is no person that you can turn around and say. And, and I think Rahul and me have been very clear. If he does something wrong, there has to be payment for it. There has to be retribution for it, uh, by law or otherwise. So in our hearts, we are clear that, you know, we're not glorifying him. But you can always find moments of goodness, humanity, in the good one or the bad one. You know, I mean, how good is a guy like Bazigar that you root for him? You know, at the end of it all, even if it's for revenge and even if the father of the girls had been mean, what he does is really... It's awful. It's awful. Yeah. You know, it's not right. So, and yeah, his mother's unwell and he goes and dies in arm, but, you know, it's still not justifiable. But you kind of root for him because at the end of it all, I think the audience will react, realize even with Grace and with Dawn and with Bazinga, there is no existence of these people. And in today's time and age, even more, why are you glorifying bad things and yeah I've been told by my actresses friends also sometimes just play the good guy now you're a nice person why do you do all this I enjoy it as an actor to be honest uh, and I have no qualms saying that it's interesting you know to just go completely and, and they have more layers and they have more layers because it's weird we that he has so to less specify about that he likes playing bad a bad uh, very so strange the majority of the world is good but there is a minority in the world which is really bad what goes in the mind of those people is very interesting but but Chug, you said in an interview with gq magazine that you that the film was more realistic and more hitting and you actually <coughs> toned it down so did, was it toned down because you were playing this man uh, no it was toned down uh, at the onset only because when rahul had written it and when we were reading it, of course, I'll, I'll be honest, the language part has to be told now because I, as an actor, can't say some of the things. Uh, no, come I can't, on. I can't. You I swear in life, don't I, you? I, I do in moments of weakness, but uh, I can't do it. I, I, I'm a daily boy, I swear. I, uh, I mean, me and Vinod, when we sit down, we, have, we just speak in swears. But, uh, <laughs> exactly. But in movies, I can't do it. I've never done it. I, I just can't do it. I mean, can't even say sorry. You can beat this out, but uh, Hindi made dog. <laughs> <laughs> also, I can't say, no way. And uh, I can't say even uh, Vishal Bhagwaj's movie's name <laughs> on, on screen. I can't say it. I, I find it odd. I'm sorry. I'll start blushing. Uh, it, it's very odd for me. It, it is very odd for me. Maybe the F word I've said it. That's really I've interesting. That's his wall. To get a feel because it was there. I uh, think some of it has to I do with the stardom this level in India. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, like, I don't know. Yeah, because I'd love to talk about walls and boundaries with him because I think that's all. I would guess that's a lot. But the connotation was for a lady. So I, for me, it was becoming an abuse to a woman. So I, I remember you asked Sanjay if you ever interviewed her. It took me like nine, ten takes, and I'm like, dusht. Dusht. And I used to keep smiling. I, I have problems with What's dusht? Is it like a douche? But do you hope, Shahrukh, that your films will bring change? Do you wish for that? See, you watch a film, and at a very personal level, they can touch you. And then you can think of things. I mean, they can vary from. Uh, getting married after watching my film. I meet a lot of couples who say we married watching your film or he proposed to me. Just yesterday somebody, uh, it, it was your book by the way, I think. Um, somebody has proposed to this girl on the cover of your book and because she likes me and him. Um, so <laughs> and I think people can get certain kind of things that touch them or turn them around or make them think differently uh, by certain films like a Swades. You know, it, hey, it's nice here yeah, that, you know, we should learn and come back and serve our country. It's a good thought. So through that aspect, 
uh, maybe the film can bring about a change in people who can then go ahead and make the changes uh, that the film kind of propagated or talked about. But as a whole, it's like a book. You know, it's not like you read this book and the world is going to change because of it. I really believe films reflect the world we live in. So it can start a discussion about the world we live in, the characters we play. And discussion can lead to a change. But on its own, you know, the movie they can do the world. या इसको देख के सारे लोग यहाँ से बाहर जाएंगे और कहेंगे ऐसा ही होना चाहिए postal services are for messages <laughs> <laughs> you know i was watching this um, round table you were talking about actors sitting together and talking about this so so the the hollywood reporter round table with actors and they were asked if they had ever fallen out of love with acting and will smith said that he actually took a two year break uh, because he felt like he had hit a ceiling with his talent and he said I, i spent two years just working on myself because your work can never be better or deeper than who you are mm. have you ever had a moment of that like feeling like you hit a ceiling in your talent it, it would be quite a thing to assume that i've reached the top of my talent first uh, well, so I, maybe not the top but that you're not moving forward in terms of you know your own talent uh you know when i'm in part of certain films and i'm just going through the motions because you don't need to do any more than that i have enough craft to know that that you know here i'm just going through the motions you know it's not really and not in a bad way and not in a bad way you have yeah. to do it like that yeah. you know certain you can't take it more seriously than it is, than it is you know and i'm doing it like that um i do have like if i have a longish run like that i do feel listen i need to oh, just move away from here for a bit i'm quieter at the end of the shoot I watch better movies, I read better books, and then I go and sign a film like Fan. You know, I wait for that to happen to me. Uh, having said that, Mr. Sunil Gavaskar once during a match years ago said the only way uh, to get bad form or uh, the lack of interest in trying to get it right is to get the bad balls out of the system. You know, just keep batting, just keep batting, get the bad balls out of the system, and then you'll start hitting the ball that you want. Uh, uh, you want it to be hit like so i would vary from uh, how mr will smith thinks that instead of taking a break i just like to go and you know play as many balls so the bad balls are out that feeling is get out get the bad films out of your system just get them out you know just keep doing it and and you know about the biggest struggle now it's not a struggle i think it's an understanding is how much can i expose of the real me in a character you know that is the struggle you know when you're new and you'll notice this with newcomers who are really wonderful and you like them and you talk about them there is a strange rawness which they are not they don't know how to hide themselves you know when i came in initially my jeans were wrong my t-shirt was wrong my hair was wrong from the physicality to the emotions they were wrong but i was i didn't even know right or wrong so i just went ahead and did it sometimes it struck a chord sometimes it didn't and even when it didn't it didn't seem um, uh, wrong to a lot of people it was like are you okay you got a smile to your face like a little kid um but as the craft develops i think somewhere down the line um, you know those emotions start getting subdued i just want to come back to being uh, that rawness again it won't be low ever but can i have the guts to be myself now in scenes uh, like there are moments in fan like when when the actor talks one scene i was really ashamed doing it not because it's happened to me or i've done it but it was really a uh, new defining part of me that what would happen to me if this happened to me and yeah this would happen to my ears were uh, getting all hot and i told manish main gaadi mein baithunga yaar main shot ho gaya main chala jaunga aur main gaadi mein baithunga thodi der ke liye now which was, which scene is this when this guy gets angry at me or... i don't want to hear that part sorry yeah no i'm glad you did that oh, i felt really awkward because i am in that movie star space by profession um I have been late. Uh, maybe I have not been subjected to this kind of humiliation ever. But it can happen. And what would I do? And if I had to, I think I would end up perhaps having to do a TV show. Sure. And oh, it was really uh, uh, even now when I say it. So 
But I like doing it. I enjoy doing it. I'm very proud of having done it. But that's just a moment. Can I increase that moment? Can I, you know, when, when I, I, I never understood it when Picasso said that after years of painting, I want to start painting like a child. I thought it was a nice line to say, you know. But I understand that now, more so. And, uh, My and wife thinks Picasso paints like a child. Not in a good way. Off, <laughs> um, that, I, I don't know, I've never taken time off. So I don't know. Suppose I take time off and just stop wanting to act. <laughs> That'd be scary. You just took five years <laughs> off. They were good for some. That's scary for me. <laughs> Yeah, don't go there. No, no, please, I won't. Then, then see, how will you be a star? Exactly. Okay, won't be this is my only shot. You, I'm not very good for it. Yeah. So, Shark, I was reading Karan's book, and, and in which he talks about you know, Salman different. and Ahmed, and yet he says that the Khans have a controlled megalomania, and you know when to use it, and you know when to let go of it. Is, is that true? Do you guys have a controlled megalomania? I, I would not be able to comment on Ahmed and Salman. You know, okay, because, when we, yeah, yeah, because when we meet, uh, I think we somehow meet at the same level. We've known each other for 20 years. So I think that part of our trapping, uh, at least visibly each other doesn't come out. You know, we just, uh, it's difficult not to be, uh, if you just ask about uh, me. I mean, I have a different way of expressing it. It's difficult not to start thinking um, special about yourself at times, on days, in evenings. Be a little more, you can hide under the garb of being a little more sensitive than the others or um, yeah I mean you know you say something to me and I may not rebut or get back to you but it's hurt my uh, ego in normal circumstances you know maybe it doesn't for us uh, like if I go for a show and I'm about to make to wait for longer than I would or somebody doesn't understand that I'm late I, I always say time starts uh, when I reach some place now that is quite a Megalomaniac or something. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta respect each other's time. I know that. I know that. I, I believe that. But there are days when I'm late and I'm like, no, time starts when I reach something. Yeah, so, okay. Like the, the day before yesterday, I was reading an interview of someone who said to wait for five hours because Shahrukh works at night. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's how I roll. It is, it is, it is, it is. Yeah, you do, you do get a little, you know, you live with yourself. I work 18 hours with myself. I'm only in an atmosphere where I don't meet normal people. I'm meeting people who are make-believing things. Uh, you talk in a certain way. You are always living some other character. Uh, you have only six, seven hours of normal daytime with people, out of which four, five hours you sleep. You know, so you really are out of touch uh, at times with reality. And when you're out of touch with reality, then the only reality you know, you know is yourself. And you're not real. You know, who, who, who can be real in my place? And I'm not showing you off, you know, to be who I have been for 25 years in the best of ways. It is very unreal, you know, it is unreal, you know. You know I mean, but, but you know yourself aware enough to let it go when you have to. Oh yes, I, I do. I try to be, I think a lot of my excessive humility uh, comes from trying to cover that up. You know, I, I really try to behave very humble. I try to be really nice, I try to be very courteous, and I am most of them. I mean, I'm brought up like that too, but I think sometimes I overdo it just to, you know, just to compensate. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I read, Sharad, this amazing list you made for any man, any boy who wants to date Suhana. You said, get a job. So this is your list for that person. Get a job. Yeah. Understand I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm everywhere. Yeah. This is you'd make this list. She's my princess, not your conquest. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite. I don't mind going back to jail. <laughs> I will do to you. So, how is this lovely have girl? Stand, have you also stuck this in your room and told me not to follow suit? No, this is, this, 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 this is absolutely. Exactly, yeah. How will this lovely girl ever find a date? No, the fact that I can say it in jest <laughs> means I won't do any of this. Yes. You, know, I'm, you I'm, what? Are you going to be a really progressive father? I am. I'm extremely progressive. I, you know, I just, I'll be again saying this. I will never be able to ask my daughter, uh, is it decent? Does he treat you well? I'm too shy to talk to women, including my own daughter. I would never be so personal with her because that's her space. Uh, because I can't be personal with her, I just put it out on social media just in case. You just said it to a magazine. I know, I know, I know, I just, everybody should know this huh? because I'll never be able to ask. I think uh, whatever her choice would be, uh, wherever, however, with whoever she wants to be with, I, I'm just going to love the person, to be really honest. I mean, this is just uh, false bravado. Uh, hoping the macho father thing will scare you. Like, you know, my dad has big moustache and carries a gun. 
you know, like I was, <laughs> my, I was told by my brother-in-law once that, you know, मेरा जो मामा है ना यार वो उसके ना डोले लश्कारे मारते हैं तलवार लेके बाहर आता कच्चे में तो हम लोग यार ये तो बड़े स्केरी लोग हैं स्वीट सा मामा ये वो लाइक ए जगत मामा ये तो स्वीट है ये तो सिंगर एंड ही इज रियली रियली काइंड एंड स्वीट एंड आई हैव अ ग्रेट सेंस ऑफ ह्यूमर बट वो बिल्� Seven years ago, when Savarya went up against Om Shanti Om, I remember you talked in interviews and, and you almost sort of vowed to kind of destroy the competition. Okay, you were really combative. Was I? Yeah. And, and you did it. You did it to the point where they stopped local production. And, and I remember interviewing Michael Linton, the CEO of Sony, like maybe a year later. And I said to him, I said, what did you learn from that experience? And, and he said, we learned that you don't go up against Shah Rukh Khan, no matter how good your product is. Today, are you that man who will sort of destroy competition? Uh, destroy, clash, aggressive, I, I think is not the word. Maybe, you know, several You don't seem ago. like that anymore. No, I'm not like that. I wasn't then also. But I do. I have a competitive spirit. I can't deny that. I won't be where I am if I wasn't competitive in my head. But I have said this to you, I think maybe in the book or somewhere, that look, if I'm climbing a mountain with someone, I'm, I'm not gonna cheat in any which way or be underhand in any which way to win that race. I make my films with a lot of confidence. Uh, that's why I do the film that I'm doing. So uh, competitive wise, yes. One, it's unfortunate, I'll, I'll be very honest, you know, because you make a big film, now more so than before, say seven years or even earlier, I, I, I'm somehow the leader of the band in that film, somehow. Not by choice or design, I just happen to be, you know, we are big production houses, Red Chili's is big, Excel is big, Rahul is a fine director, everybody in Nawaz is a fantastic actor, but still it is led by me somehow. It becomes your film. It becomes a Shah Rukh Khan film. Mm -hmm. Whether I like it, I don't like it. Uh, I mean, I had to struggle to make Dear Zindagi not my film. You know, that I'm not really playing the lead uh, please don't put the pressure on this wonderful, beautiful film that Gauri and Alia have made, you know. So I don't know how to handle that anymore. So I, the responsibility weighs heavy on me now. It's more than the competition. And I just hope I don't let anyone down here. Because, you know, I work with directors who come in from a different space. And I know deep down inside, they want to make that 200 crore before film also, you know. And they feel this is it now. You know, we've got that option. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. There are different directors who, uh, cameramen, music directors, singers, you know, everybody hopes with this film, like, this is your third interview, you've arrived. So exactly like that. <laughs> A lot of people think they have arrived because they've done that film. What happens with Stardom? That I've got this big film with a big star, with a big production house. It, it, it really weighs heavy on me, the responsibility. And I just hope I get it right for every count, you know. So you're filling in the squares, you're like, okay, I hope the box office is good because somebody was thinking that. I hope the critical acclaim is good. I hope the awards are good. I hope the, you know, overall world domination ideology someone is good. It has become, when you are a star, it does become uh, a huge responsibility. So the competitive edge is still there, but in terms of delivering that responsibility. I'm not going to turn around and say, I do it for others, you know, it's not me, it's for the others. I'm not, I'm not a social worker, to be honest, but uh, somewhere I just cannot discount the fact that whoever is working with me, like I genuinely, honestly feel extremely sad that I let Manish Sharma down. And it's got nothing to do with, one can turn around and say the film didn't work for that, like, so we also knew the film is not a commercial film, but I still feel 10%, 20% I let him down. Somewhere I could have been a little more, I'm more experienced. Maybe I should have said something. Maybe I should have felt something. Maybe I should have changed something. Maybe I should have done something. Uh, I'm just an actor. You know, I think I did my job to the best of my capability. I'm not questioning or feeling guilty, but I know Manish Sharma deserved uh, a better platform when he worked with me, and I'm not taking away from what he's done before. But I just feel saddened by that. I told you that last time also. It, it's not the destruction of, oh, I didn't make so much, or I did. It's just like, like, yeah, he's such a good director. He needed, uh, and even if it did not work with me after that, you know, it just, I, I just own that part. So that part uh, does get a little uh, heavy. And I want, you know, 
it's a strange amount of goodness in a megalomaniacal movie star who's self-obsessed. And listen, I hope it just goes right for everybody. The actress, the other two actors, three actors, everyone. There are a lot of people in this film here. In and every film. So it's not like a producer. It's just like um, the guy who unfortunately has been chosen to be the leader. I wish I did not have to lead a film. I really, really wish sometimes. You know, every time I work with a bigger director or uh, a, 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 a named person, I'm like, I hope it's about him or her. It's not about me. I just want to come and act. But it doesn't remain so. This is an affiliated job that I have to bear the responsibility. You've got to look after everyone. In your so, head at least. In my head and in my heart, yeah. I, I, I don't have to say it. Uh, I can't say it. I think all of us are equal working on a film. I'm the least uh, talented sometimes on a set, sometimes I'm the uh, most pampered, uh, sometimes I'm the most looked after, Some are, sometimes I'm really good at what I'm doing. But at the end of it all, uh, without perhaps wanting to be so, uh, it's, it's difficult uh, being the person who just suddenly gets the one to be looked after. And it's very sweet, you know, sometimes a film is being made and everybody else is like, Shalmai won't be good for everyone. So they're even trying to make me feel nice, that everything is working. And I know, I know all this. I, that's why I'm beginning to be detached from my films, you know. I just need to move away. I don't even watch my films now, um, the complete product. I'm like, let me just move away because I can't get so uh, into it that it starts playing on my mind. Because at the end of it all, I'm just an actor. I just need to go and do whatever I can do to the best of my capability, be myself as an actor. So. It does get, uh, you know, some, some, some friends, Adi and all, sometimes tell me, to this picture, man, to so aram se, khana kha kya, rest kar, aur kuch nahi sochna, kuch nahi sochna, to sir act kar. I just want you to come and act in this film. Kuch nahi karna to this. So they feel that I want to do that. I feel I want to do that. But invariably, it can, it, you, you can't avoid it at times. So, yeah, so uh, the competition is to make sure that everybody else gains what they set out to gain in a nice way from the film that I'm part of. Well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You are it now. You made it. So I just want to tell you on Film Companion, Anupama Chopra has arrived. This is her <laughs> third interview with me on the trot in the last three months. Amazing. I mean, you know, I would give her an Oscar for this achievement. Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Anupama Chopra on Film Companion for getting three interviews with me after 20 years. I mean, God, she's... she's and a, listen, I didn't ask the questions. That you, you didn't even ask me the question. She's the Will Smith of world cinema right now. Are you, James are, Cameron. Are you hinting that I should take a two-year break? I'm the Will Smith. Longer. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah, come back and interview Sohana now. <laughs> yeah, maybe her children from the guy who was going to read all this and not date her. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's all the best. I like coming on round tables. It makes me feel important. No, really. <laughs> I see all round table uh, discussions and all, and I've never been on one of them. But I, I really enjoy being around. You make me feel very important because of the round table. The square ones make you feel you're not such a big star and an actor. Round table <laughs> makes you take yourself serious, seriously <laughs> as an actor. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now I'm incapable of asking anything <laughs> <laughs> no, you can, please. No, no, thank, no you. You can thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is Shah Rukh Khan on uh, Film Compact. I feel so bad for stars of his status sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many things that they have to deal with as opposed to just being whatever their profession is. Actors, obviously, are usually the bigger ones because they're the faces, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody loves but sometimes when you're, I mean, nobody else is really at Shah Rukh Khan's level, but when you're at that level, it's like you're saying, he can't just be an actor. Mm -hmm. If the film fails, it's a Shah Rukh Khan failure. Right, even if he has a small role like he did in, in uh, um, the one with Ali. Yeah, Deers and Dougie. Um, it, it's actually very, and I've equated him many times, the closest we have to a Bollywood actor is Johnny Depp, especially now here in Hollywood. He hasn't watched his films since millennia. Yeah, but uh, that his are for different reasons, though. His are because he hates himself. Really. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, and he doesn't like his acting abilities. Um, but I bet it's similar also, because obviously, for a while, Johnny was the biggest 
star in the world, mm-hmm. at least in the Hollywood land. Yeah. And if it was a failure, it was a Johnny Depp failure. Johnny Depp's next film, it will be, if it fails, it will be a Johnny Depp failure. Johnny Depp's comeback is a failure. Mm-hmm. Not the rest. He's actually playing King Louis or some, some king of mm. France or mm. something like that. Um, but yeah. It, I just feel so bad sometimes because they can't be just what they want to be because there's so much else yeah. going on that has nothing to really do with them or their talent. Sure, sure. You know? And he is he is the most interesting um, and his perspective on acting and movies, I've never heard anybody talk about film and acting and the approach to it the way he does Mm -hmm. i i he has he has there's some things he talks about that resonate with me completely on the way that i view cinema and acting and then there's other things he says that i am in complete and total contradiction and opposition Mm -hmm. but i understand where he's coming from i don't I, I don't agree with that take, but that's not that's just my personal opinion. I, it's, it's his personal opinion. And I, I would love I, I could the idea of like sitting down with a whole evening with just some beers and some snacks and just talk acting around the table with him. And I'm thinking of everybody who has completely different approaches. Nasir, Nawaz. Nawaz and Nasir are pretty similar. Pankaj, um, Radhika. I have just this round table of like Even eight or nine. Or yeah. Have eight or nine and talk about the totality of what they do and how much of it impacts them with the core being actor. But then there's all of those other things that go with it because he's you're right and he's right as big as all those other names are. There's nothing he can do if he's going to appear in a film. It's an SRK film, even if it's a a tiny, tiny role. And he's he seems to be very uh, okay with um, just making choices based on entertainment value, not artistic level or storytelling capacity it's yeah. it's entertainment I is his primary goal the things that we would might disagree with is because it's a completely different industry that he came into oh yeah and obviously his stardom's at a different strategy yeah it's a very very different world and so he has to look at it unfortunately at least in my eyes sometimes differently than just an actor would yeah he has to look at it because if he doesn't make a certain amount he's not a star anymore yeah but that's the thing he he could he could go Daniel Day Lewis and say, "Don't give a crap about anything but the acting. I'm making one film every five years if I feel like it. Bye. I'm doing my film, and then no one will know where I am." Yeah, but if that film makes barely anything, who's he, he's no longer SRK? That's but, my point. Yeah, he the the choice is still there, and he feels a great. Um, he f- clearly feels an incredible burden in carrying that. And it was a great question about how much of that, she didn't phrase it this way, but it is inherent in the question, is how much of what drives him is megalomania? Is it because it's driven by values or is it driven by, um, uh, uh, the, the, the what? Vanity? Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, great, the V and V. Is, and is it how much of it is, this is truly what I value or is this truly what I don't want to lose? In terms of, and I think it's a, he's a beautiful mix because he's an extremely intelligent man. Uh, and I think it's a, I think he's a strange mix and complexity of both. I think he simultaneously has some very unique values who would, who would place entertainment above artistry that other actors would never do. Yet at the same time, he, he cares about artistry, but not so much as he cares about what his fans think. Mm-hmm because he doesn't want to disappoint them. And I think he has this mixture of, at night, I don't want to disappoint the fans, but I also don't want to fail as an actor. I think a lot of it that that would help uh, the Indian industry as a whole is the fact that if they were more like Hollywood in terms of audiences' views of collections of films. Right, the view of the box office. 
like we've said it a thousand times, we don't give two shits uh, outside of, oh, I'm glad this film was making money, so whatever. Um, not like when a film opens, that's supposed to be a big and it's like bad, like it's not making a lot of money. And so everybody deems it not right. a success. No, exactly. Even if it's a good film. No, that like there's there's actors that we're just it's a good film. I don't care what it, I don't even know what it made. No, there's actors there's actors that have done films and seen the final project and thought this is absolute garbage and the film did well and they didn't sleep really well that night because though the movie did well, they themselves were very disappointed in the artistry. And that's not just for actors, it's directors as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's other films that they're very proud of that didn't do well in the box office, and they could give two rats' asses about the box office. So I think it would help a lot if they didn't have that burden of, yeah, my film needs to make a certain amount, or it's deemed bad, Correct. deemed a failure. Because there is a similarity in the fact that both industries, as is all industries, are the entertainment business yeah. it's 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 show business so you do want to make money on your film primarily so that you can make more films that you want to make it's but more primarily about the fact that the audience plays such a high importance on what a film makes well yeah and that importance level isn't just everything see for us the box office is the number of eyeballs that have seen it and you want them to see it whereas the other side of that equation which is a lot of the indian audience for films is this movie's good because it had box office. I, I could tell you a good example right now of this uh, box office means absolutely nothing. Jurassic World's making plenty of goddamn money. And that is an absolutely terrible film. Nobody's saying, oh, it's made so much money. See how good it is? No, that no. won't get nominated for anything. I, everybody's saying, uh, no one's even mentioning box office because no one cares. Like I said, no. everybody's just like, this is not good. No, everybody <laughs> that I have relationship with is like, yeah, except Alexis and Micah were like, yeah, I had a good time because they went with friends and just were there to enjoy nothing and just have their brains, you know, but dribble. Producers have such an easier time because audiences here do not care. The only time you're going to know is when, like, Entertainment Weekly Post, this movie made this much. And when it matters, like, you know what matters to me? I knew and could tell from the buzz and the quality of the film that Maverick was going to be Cruz's first $1 billion film. And it is. It, it's now hit the $1 billion mark. You know, what makes me happy about that? One, I root for Tom Cruise. I really like him. I, I, I know he loves movies, and I, I think he's a talented man. The other thing, though, the most important thing about that number for me is every single one of those dollars means eyeballs. And I want everybody to see that movie because it's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. So I just think it weighs on the stars. It does, and it especially weighs because he's not just talking about his status. His films impact his industry, yeah. and if his films don't do well, his industry doesn't it's do such well. Such a such a difference between the two industries. Yeah, the, the closest, like I mentioned, Tom Cruise a lot because Tom Cruise is Paramount Pictures. So that level of responsibility, it's why he had his meltdown he did on Mission Impossible um, about masks is he carries the weight of an entire studio and a huge segment of the entertainment industry, and that's very few people have that. Yeah, and he's one of them. Yeah. Anyways, great interview. Great interview. I always enjoy listening to him. I hope I can listen to him in person one day. Yep. Talk to my face. Yes. Uh, please let us know what should we our next Shovel Khan film down below. Juice!